Some say it was the soul of the gardens, the very reason the gardens were created by John and Mary Elitch. It was known as America's oldest summer stock theater. For 100 years, audiences enjoyed thousands of productions on its stage, everything from Shakespeare to vaudeville. Many of the world's most famous names in theater, film, and show business appeared there. What I loved was going into the theater to see all those pictures outside, to see Grace Kelly and to see Rex Harrison and all these people that had played there, John Barrymore and all the Barrymores, I think, at one time and another had played there. Oh, what a wonderful entrance that was. The theater was still under construction at the time of John Elitch's death in 1891. But his wife Mary completed it the following season and began to replace vaudeville with light opera and dramatic presentations. After several seasons, Mary appointed a theater director and organized the first dramatic stock company. Actors who would reside at the gardens presenting as many as 10 different plays during the summer. The company's first season premiered with Helene and A Bachelor's Romance, starring playwright Eugene O'Neill's father, James, as the leading man. It wasn't long before the Elitch Theater Summer Stock Company became well known to the theatrical world. Many famous artists of the day were interested in playing for The Lady of the Gardens in Denver. So popular was the theater becoming that Mary had the building remodeled with expanded seating and new box seats added to accommodate more patrons. In 1899, Mary staged Denver's first presentation of Cyrano de Bergerac. It was a mammoth production requiring a cast of over 100 and many Denver residents found themselves appearing on stage with the famous leading lady Henrietta Crossman. Way back in the early 1900s, a um, young lad appeared at the stage door and asked, offered to scrub the theater floor for a ticket to the current week's production. The young lad was later to reappear at Elish's, except on the stage this time. He was Douglas Fairbanks. It was about this time that the beautifully painted stage curtain depicting Anne Hathaway's cottage from Shakespeare first appeared. It remained in use until the theater closed in 1991. In 1906, thanks to the San Francisco earthquake, Denver was treated to the immortal French actress, Madame Sarah Bernhardt. One look at that expressive face, upturned beneath the drooping black hat from which the heavy veil had been lifted, told me it was no other than Madame Bernhardt. As this realization came to me, she turned and our eyes met. There was no need for an introduction. Without a word, we folded into each other's arms. We sighed together. We knew a common language, and we shared our delight in the knowledge, though our languages were not the same. Sarah appeared in two programs in one day, and many in Mary's company performed as supers just to say, I played Elitch's with Sarah Bernhardt. Sarah Bernhardt was also uh, kind of a rebel in the way she behaved, pulled some kind of cute pranks, one of which was to go down into the bear pit, and both of them went together, and they would stand right by the bears and then wave at everyone, and people thought this was incredible to see these two women, one very famous, Sarah Bernhardt, down there looking at bears while they were thinking they were going to be eaten or something. But Mary did this frequently, and Sarah Bernhardt went right along with it. Many other famous actors became Elitch leading men and women. Louis Stone was featured in 1913. He arrived for the season after driving his automobile from California. John Mulvihill took over as the theater manager after the gardens were sold in 1916. I remember Frederick March and Florence Eldridge as two of the actors because they were married while they were uh, playing at Elitch's. And so Florence Eldridge was fired because Mr. Mulvihill had told him that they, he would not have any married couples acting together. 
The theater prospered under Mulva Hill's direction, and many famous and not so famous appeared. John Mulva Hill's son-in-law, Arnold Gertler, and his wife Marie took over management of the theater after Mulva Hill's death in 1930. From the early days of summer stock, Arnold and Marie Gertler would leave for New York in January and return in late March, having finished their chores of casting uh, the company for the coming season and selecting 10 plays they felt Elish audiences would like. Uh, in their New York office, they maintained a huge casting book, and in the book was the name of every actor and actress that interviewed with a short comment after their names. There was one young aspiring actor who, after his name, had this little notation, don't interview again, ears too big. Of course, it was Clark Gable. Wednesday matinees were big Denver social affairs, and women would vie over season tickets each year. A young little-known actor named Eddie Robinson was fired by Elitch owner Arnold Gertler for not keeping up his wardrobe. Denver socialite and newspaper heiress Helen Bonfies had a long and important association with the Elitch Theater. She was a theater beneficiary and appeared in minor roles in many stock performances. Jack Gertler, of course, had some of them played some of the minor minor parts in some of the theater productions, and I believe one of them was the Man Who Came to Dinner, in which Helen Bonfies played the nurse. And there is a a, a line, well, several lines. I think the the prime the man who came to dinner always called for his nurse as Miss Bedpan, and Jack said that it was a great treat in Denver to hear the lady who was on the Denver Post and who was such a prominent person in Denver to be referred to as Miss Bedpan. <laughs> Arnold Gertler's sons, Bud and Jack Gertler, started working for their parents as theater ushers. The theater remained open during World War II, and many GIs stationed in Denver saw their first live drama at Elitch's. You could dress up and feel uh, kind of li little elegant, you know, and then you'd, in between acts, you'd go get a soft drink or something and, and then come back and um, uh, the, the young people were always the ushers and the usherettes and they were always gracious to you and I always enjoyed going around the outer part of the theater and looking at all the stars that had been there over the years and reminiscing about some of the ones that we had seen. After the war, Arnold's sons, Bud and Jack, took over the Elitch Gardens operations. They rotated their management duties between the theater and the Trocadero Ballroom. To reach the rehearsal yard behind the director's office, uh, one had to take a flagstone path. Arnold called the path and the flagstones stepping stones to stardom. Arnold was most prophetic because in 1951, a 21-year-old ingenue arrived at Elitch's for the 10 weeks of, of summer theater, and she appeared in every play. Uh, she lived uh, in a room over on uh, 39th and Tennyson Street and rode a bicycle back and forth to work. At the close of the Elitch season, this lovely young lady left for Hollywood. Two years later, she won the Academy Award for Best Actress, and a year later, she won the Prince of Monaco. Truly, Grace Kelly took those stepping stones to stardom. In 1964, Miss Helen Bonfies became theater manager, and the stock system was replaced by the star system. Walter Pidgeon and Cesar Romero appeared during her first season. Other big-name stars appeared at Elitch's, like James Whitmore, Darren McGavin, Shelley Winters, and Debbie Reynolds. You know, there was a real spiritual feeling there. It was like you knew you were going to be buoyed up when you were on stage. You knew that 
you couldn't do too many things wrong somehow because all those spirits of all those actors through the years through well now hundreds a hundred years have were there to help you Although the touring plays with famous stars worked for a while, it was becoming more and more difficult to fill an entire summer with good traveling productions. I think that the theater started to have its demise, basically brought on by television. Um, not the movies, but television. And as television became popular through the late 50s going into the 60s, it was found that the actors from Broadway shows and legitimate theater could find easy work or easier work in, in television and or the movies. And with that, it became harder and harder to find people willing to do plays. The last full theater season was 1988. And the last play was The Rubber Bridegroom, presented in 1991. That Elitch stage, I swear, I really think, and I, I sure wouldn't see that, say this about other places I've performed, but I think I could be blindfolded and I would know if my foot was on that stage. It's an almost palpable feeling of, what is that? It's like, I'm home. It's, it's a great feeling. It's a wonderful stage. After 100 years, the world-famous Elitch Theater went dark.